The drive to enhance safety in civil aviation across the globe over the decades has remained a journey and not a destination. That's because oversight duties on airlines, aircraft owners, airport authorities and other players in the air transport value chain is guided by standards and recommended practices prescribed by the global regulator, the International Civil Aviation Organization. Here in Nigeria, the interplay of policy and regulation has once more come to the fore with operators asking for a shift in the licensing process. This is our focus on this edition. And a man learns to fly by building a simulator in his home. A warm welcome to the program. I'm Bukola Ju Okitumbi. The sharpest traffic decline in aviation history occurred in 2020 as figures from the International Air Transport Association shows revenue passenger kilometers fell by 65.9% compared to the full year of 2019. In Nigeria, COVID-19's economic impact revealed a revenue loss of $994 million in 2020. In terms of employment risk, it cost over 125,000 jobs, and loss of contribution to the gross domestic product is put at $885 million. For a speedy recovery, interest parties believe the aviation industry in Nigeria must witness a shift in policy and regulation. For many years, the industry has witnessed a lot of changes in terms of management, policy and regulation, while challenges of funding, climate change, technological innovation, fueling, among others, further worsened due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, in, the, in the last uh, few months, uh, Many interested parties in the industry believe these challenges must be overcome, and that's the cross of discussions at this occasion. Today, there is there's only one process for obtaining AOC, whether you intend a small, medium, or large operation. Unless this system is changed, so the little operators intended to do small sectors of the of aviation will be frustrated at the initial. A KO standard small, medium, or large operations are supposed to exist within a CAA system. The model exists everywhere. Example, air taxi, air charter, high-value cargo operations, non-scheduled schedule operations, etc. I quite encourage no discrimination at all. For the airline and airport operators, the impact of COVID-19 is persisting, and government's policies must provide room for growth. If you're in this industry, Policy is there just to guide you. You do not have to think about the process or the procedure or the SOP. It's provided for you, but you have a responsibility to ensure that of your own volition, as a professional, you commit to that implementation. It's very important. We do not have experts that need to be spoon-fed or driven to do the right thing. The argument that airlines will fare better with less of the surcharges which are just to take care of recurrent and staff bills they do not need. Government would do well to review and reverse some of these recommendations. Also, ipso facto justified that only the technical staff of these agencies that are providing direct services for the airlines should be factored into the revenue generation from the airlines. This will help the airlines to survive. While an airline operator is asking for a review of the air operator certificate process, the federal government says it's not resting on its oars to provide an enabling environment for operators. The ministry in conjunction with the aviation agencies are working with the National Assembly to review, amend all the aviation agencies acts to provide effective management of services and align with modern technological development in line with international best practices and development, Nigeria pre presently has bilateral air services agreement with 89 countries, while 15 countries have indicated their preparedness to sign battles with Nigeria. And 13 other countries are in the threshold of renegotiation. 
Aviation is central to the economy of every nation. Each government contributes to this economic well-being when it fosters a safe, competitive and sustainable aviation industry. Uh, quite a lot we are doing to reposition NCA to effectively comply with our statutory functions. Our Civil Aviation Act so that is passed by the National Assembly and signed into law by His Excellency Mr. President. The new Civil Aviation Act and what Civil Aviation Act does, it gives NCA the mandate to do our functions, you know. Uh, since the last Civil Aviation Act, there have been so many developments in the aviation industry that we are not covered. So many SAPs, uh, things like remote piloting, aircraft systems, uh, environment, cyber security, and many others. So this, we need the Civil Aviation Act to cover all those areas. And once we get our Civil Aviation Act, uh, the next step was, uh, is going to be the review of our Civil Aviation Regulations, Nigerian Civil Aviation Regulations. Uh, Nigerian civil aviation regulations, a lot of people have it misnomer. It's not NCA that does it and throttles it down the throat of the industry. It is done in consultation with the stakeholders. What we do is we send a notice of proposed rulemaking and we ask for input from the industry. We do something, then we bring it out to the industry. We all sit down, we discuss it and agree with it. That's why it's called Nigerian civil aviation, not NCA civil aviation regulations. We discuss with the uh, all the industries. So we need to update our regulations. Things have changed and there are new additions. So we need to, uh, our regulations need to reflect that. Uh, COVID-2 has brought a lot of changes. We need to reflect that. There are new developments. We need to reflect all that and modernize an industry and make it a performance base. Uh, a smart regulation, part of it will be performance based. Part of it will be prescriptive as to encourage the growth uh, and expansion of the industry. I think we have the best relationship with the airlines now. I, I have not seen any problem where we fight with one. Another. Of course, one or two people have uh, complained. Uh, if we have 50, 30, 20 operators and one or two people complain, it's normal. That's no uh, big deal about it. Nobody in NCA can grant any operator without the approval of the DH. Absolutely nobody. Nobody can grant anybody. I alone, as the DG, am the person that can grant uh, any, any operator. The air transport industry, including airlines and its supply chain, are estimated to support $600 million of GDP in Nigeria. These virtual bridges in the air enable the economic flows of goods, investments, people and ideas that are the fundamental drivers of economic growth. In the first quarter of the year, 14,662 domestic flights operated in the country 7,554 were delayed, that's about 50%. 562 flights were delayed out of the 1,871 international flights operated out of the country. Nine international and 149 domestic flights were also cancelled. Getting a flight across the country has become relatively easier, but the delays and cancellations are still persisting. <laughs> Some passengers share their experience on this challenge. The late flight is um, something common with us here in Nigeria. Most times they will tell you the flight is maybe 12 o'clock. Sometimes you end up spending two, three hours, the flight will leave maybe by three. And uh, they will tell you due to bad weather or due to one operational reasons or the other. Which is usually not the best because why people travel through the airport is because they want to keep appointments on time. Sometimes I may have an appointment in Abuja, built for 3 o'clock, and I expect that if I catch a 12 o'clock flight, I should be in 55 minutes or an hour, 30 minutes, I should be in Abuja. Most times you see people missing their appointments and all that, which is not very good for us. In an in, in aviation team, you have time limits. 
When you say, oh, I'm going on total place, my time is 11 o'clock and I must go. And when you come down here to the airport, you say, no, oh, uh, we delay you for three hours, four hours because the aircraft is not full. Story come upon them, but even they can even cancel the flight because of that. While delays and cancellation are the order of the day, this passenger has a grouse over turning up late for his flight. I I will tell you the flight for you scheduled for 9.45. But apparently I got here around 9.05. Um, so I was told that I was told that they, they were checked in. So all avenue to plead and beg for concession to join the flight could have bought if so as I was asked to be scheduled for the next available flight, which was um, for 145. And um, the price was not funny at all. So I had to pay an extra charge for about 11,000 plus, which for me, it's, uh, it's a rip-off you get. So if I think if a flight is um, scheduled for 945, and um, give or take the passenger comes um, like let me say 40 minutes before the time, then I think there should be some room for concession. But the flight has not even left at all. You get, if I come out after maybe maybe 10 or 15 minutes before, then I think that's fine. But so that, that's just my own uh, plight. I should be looked at, looked at into generally in the aviation. At least there should be some room for because there should be anything, if an emergency for the person that, that is coming to book, there should be room generally. So that's just my own experience that I want um, the industry to look at at least. Thank you. Okay, so, so there, there, should be, there should be more room for incentive because okay, when I came in, I, I complained to them. They said that if I had checked in online, then they may, maybe I would have, I have been granted that uh, concession. So I said, fine, this information I get telling me now. If I was told, maybe, maybe in your ticket, I said, fine, if you are meeting, if you are, if you are coming a um, few minutes to, you can check in online, then probably I won't fall into that uh, victim. So, so sometimes this is not loopholes. So, so people are not, like, if you're not informed, definitely you'll be ripped from that uh, perspective. So for me, it's a ripple for me today. Thank you. Kiss the other name. Another traveler believes the industry regulator should step up its game. Most times these things happen without any serious apologies. They just tell you due to operational reasons. And it's not good. So the NCA and we should sit on the airlines. When you do these kind of things, the NCA should have a unit that checks if actually there's an issue. While travelers believe carriers are not living up to their contractual agreement, an operator says airlines strive to live up to their billing, but other issues could interfere smooth operations. They might be coming to the airport to come and fly and there will be traffic. When I was coming here this morning, I was waiting for two hours because there was an accident. So a lot of things cause these delays. And we beg, we, we, we sympathize and empathize with the passengers, what they go through, but it's for their safety. Again, facilitation at the airport. If you have a 6.30 flight and over 1,000 people are queuing up to pass through one scanner, you know, there has bound to be uh, a delay. If that 6.30 flight now goes at 7.30 or 7, you've lost 30 minutes or thereabout, you can never recover that. In some daylight airports across the country, Airline operators must schedule their flights within the time given, bringing to the fore aircraft utilization planning. Meanwhile, Nigeria's Civil Aviation Authority has warned all airlines to always adhere to the Nigerian Civil Aviation Regulations and Passengers' Bill of Rights in their dealings. Welcome back. Aviation unions divided as NG Eagle gears up to collect its air operating certificate. That's a news flash. An airport can be described as a complex entity with multiple occupants, a transient population and time critical operations. Such an environment is vulnerable to a variety of different risks and threats. Dealing with insider threats is an important part of the day-to-day -day operations. Insider threats are the ones that can even kill the system. You know, the, the people outside now, they find it difficult to come in. So what they feel they can do is, oh, let me see what I can do to an insider. 
either give money or give bribe, then they will carry out that work for us. So that's the more reason if you must at any point in time. So the restricted areas are so tight. Uh, we had a transportation security administration, Homeland Security from USA. They came to the country and uh, this place was one of the areas they visited. I put it to you, they, 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 they tried looking for errors, but they did not see any because the access control was so tight. Solidarity. Union members in Arike had to rally within the headquarters of the airline in Ikeja, Lagos to show their support for a new airline, NG Eagle, an independent entity being floated by the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria. <laughs> for the unions in Arik, the decision by Amcon to float another airline sits well with them. We can count on the NCAA to do due diligence and ensure that whoever party has started, gone through due process, and completed all the due processes of the AOC, that we are sure that the NCA will accordingly issue an AOC. Leave the issue of debt to the two parties, the one who is owing and the one who is owed. However, this idea is not going down well with another aviation union, which is asking the Minister of Aviation to stop the issuance of an air operating certificate to NG Eagle over an unpaid debt. When we carry out our research, we found out that those airlines that were enjoying the services being provided, they were not paying. If we allow it, they will not pay that debt. And they are deceiving Nigerians, even deceiving government, by the time they get that OOC, that Nigerian Eagle, they will turn around and be saying that it is national carrier, and it is not national carrier. With Arik Air under Amcon's management since 2017, calls to the asset manager for clarifications were not returned as a press time. Amcon announced four years ago that it was taking over the carrier owing to its heavy financial debt that was threatening to ground the airline. The La Palma airport has reopened, but flights remain cancelled in the aftermath of the island's volcanic eruption. Officials said the airport had reopened after teams cleared ash off the runway. But Binta, the Canary Islands airline, said it will continue to cancel flights because of the dangerous flying conditions. Travellers had been faced with cancelled flights during the weekend and many had joined long queues at the port in hope of getting a boat off the island. Back in the city, people used umbrellas to protect them from the ashes spewed by the volcano. The eruption has destroyed hundreds of houses and forced the evacuation of nearly 6,000 people since it began on September 19. La Palma, with a population of over 83,000, is one of the Canary Islands archipelago in the Atlantic Ocean. No fatalities or serious injuries have been reported in the volcano's eruption, but about 15% of the island's economically crucial banana could be at risk, jeopardizing thousands of jobs. <laughs> Alitalia workers blocked the highway linking Rome to its airport as the company prepares to give way to the new state-owned carrier, ITA. <laughs> Hundreds of pilots and flight attendants sat in the middle of the road, blocking the traffic and forcing travelers to leave their taxis to reach the airport by foot. Alitalia kicked off the sale of its brand on September the 18th with a base price of $340 million plus taxes, while the company's brand and its loyalty program will be sold in an open tender. As agreed with the EU Commission, Alitalia will sell its brand in an open tender and ITA can present an offer to buy it together with other potential buyers by September the 30th. ITA will operate with less than half of Alitalia's fleet of aircraft and will only be allowed to take over limited parts of its predecessor's handling and maintenance businesses.
The Italian government received the go-ahead from Brussels to inject 1.35 billion euros into the new carrier. ITA is due to start flying in place of Alitalia on October the 15th and plans to employ only a small part of its predecessors' 11,000 total workforce under a new, less generous labour contract. <music> Aviation this week winds down with 73-year-old Mohamed Malhas fulfilling his dream of flying planes after building a flight simulator in his basement to practice his passion every day. He spent four years building a cockpit in his basement. Now to the Red Eagle Aerobatic Team from the Aviation University of the PLA Air Force practice of their jaw-dropping aerobatic stunts before the 13th China International Aviation and Aerospace Exhibition, which is ongoing in South China's Guangdong province. During the air show, the Red Eagle team will present the artistic appealing ballet in the air when performing the highly difficult movements they have to withstand the test by the extreme. Not every person has a chance to pilot an airplane, especially at such a high-level air show. Only the camera provides viewers with the first-hand pictures of the performance. According to one of the pilots of the Red Eagle team, the flying speed reached some 600 kilometers per hour when performing the aerobatic movements. That poses great challenges to the pilot's ability to drive the aircraft stably. Pilots need to face their extreme physical limits while at the same time performing a sequence of exhilarating aerobatic figures. The plane looks flying stably when viewed from outside. In fact, the joystick was clicking fast to adjust the distance of the interval. When the airplane is doing the somersaults, it requires a bigger payload, usually five, and the pilot's face may be deformed. Or another difficulty is to omit the dazzling colorful smoke trails. The 32-minute performance has made the pilot sweaty, with hands becoming rigid. If you're flying too close, you may encounter the air current and it may be dangerous, resulting in collision. Here's a limit. The second is a limit of the vertical movement. If you fly too high, it is not clear in the sky. If you fly too low, you will end up hitting the ground. But, What a beautiful display of skill and expertise. And it's on that note the curtain comes down on the program. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Bukola Joe Okitumbi. Okay